Uh, my name is Sim Pfeffer. I'm an art historian and creator at KW. Mm -hmm. uh, the first show I created six years ago was Joe Coleman. Joe Coleman is a painter, an American painter, who was somehow not really known at all uh, and was more seen, as you can view on the internet in those times, as an outsider artist. Mm -hmm. And it was a time when they asked me to do my first show when also documentary would be on and also Venice Biennial and a lot of international group shows and I thought it would be interesting to do a solo show with an artist who is not until that point not so much part of the contemporary art scene because uh, I think Joe was, Coleman was in his time in his mid-fifties and uh, which made him interesting was beside his painting, which I think at all are totally contemporary and not at all outside. He also collects a huge collection of um, of Rex figures, uh, of letters, because he has a huge fascination with serial killers, which is quite an American topic. And uh, I decided to do a huge show where you really get into the world of Joe Coleman. And somehow the whole show w uh, became like also an exhibition about different ways of showing art because we started somehow in, in the Hall of Kunstwerke bringing in Circus Wagon where we presented all what she called his auditorium, all his figures, all his things he collected which are really close connected to his painting and it was like a Wunderkammer, mm -hmm. like the first play somehow to show art. And in the first row we shot his portraits which are um, which reminds a lot to medieval art because you see for example a serial killer and around the portrait we have this in the sceneries in sequences the whole life of this person and you really get into this life and you understand how it happened that somebody started to kill people and you really get out in the lives of these people. And this was like a portrait gallery then we had in the first row it was like a totally contemporary white cube mm -hmm. where we had this uh, New York street sceneries and in the third part which was maybe the most contemporary we also showed his performances, his uh, favorite films and this co com oh, is, uh, 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 how much he is, uh, he's also into music mm -hmm. and this was more like a media section. Mm -hmm. And uh, so somehow the whole show was like going through different ways of showing art, mm -hmm. and um, and I think it was quite surprising because he was not at all mm -hmm. known mm -hmm. in the contemporary art scene. And mm -hmm. I also thought to start with somewhat thing which was sure that some people, whether the people would love it or hate it, but I think if the people saw the show, it was you couldn't you couldn't have an opinion on it. Mm -hmm. And I always like if the if you have to react on something and have to decide how you deal with it and how you look at it. I think like in a group show for me it's important that you never, uh, even if you set a topic, that the artworks themselves are staying as complex as they are. Because you always like pointed out in a group show a certain aspect of a work, but I, for me it's important, even though this is a uh, certain aspect which should be more visible in the group exhibition, for me it's important that still the works stay autonomous and independent, autonomous and independent, and uh, and then it's I think the way you're putting, you always have to create a narrative and have to um, put the works into a dialogue. And I think, um, yeah, I think this is uh, the most important and um, the point where you really have to be uh, precise and, and really reflect a lot that um, it becomes a dialogue and becomes interesting and to work, work with each other and not against each other and make them yeah, better mm -hmm. instead of make them worse in a, in a group context. Narration has to be done by the curatorial concept, mm -hmm. so that the works are standing in a certain way. As I say, on their own, 
but that how they put it and how also I think it's really always important to create how a visitor enter a space, how uh, you can start, it, it is always start a narration, what is the first word you see where you can can make, for example, a topic or uh, how the first words I see to, to make for somehow for the visitor possible to enter the cosmos you, you want to explain and want to point out and then um, develop this because after a while you can also put, uh, I think for me it's always a part in a group show, you always have like like uh, the black sheep who is somehow against the concept and shows that all of the other works are inside this concept because uh, you always, the concept can't be too rigid and also the, for me it's really important if I do group show they always come out of the idea of a certain piece of art. I think it's really, for me, it's dangerous to, to have an idea that there are so many different topics which could be interesting, but somehow this topic has to become out of an art piece itself, otherwise it's maybe interesting theoretically, but maybe not out of the um, idea what artists do. Um, and uh, so for, I think, the group shows I, I did uh, in the last years were always starting with one work I saw and then somehow the idea came up to do an, a group show about this, but um, I think it's, diffi uh, it's difficult if you have an idea about a certain topic and then s trying to start to looking for works who fit into that. I think it should always start with a piece of art and, uh, and then I think it can become interesting. Maybe first of all to speak generally, I think that always the space has to serve the art. So sometimes uh, you have to change the space. But I think the structure of Prusberg is quite special because we have in a certain way, in every floor we have like the main hall and then we have four floors. You always have to start with zero again in a certain way. And it's always like a different chapter which can be for a certain exhibition even good. And it's, I always have to be good. You have to have made it as something good that you start again, but you always have to start differently, uh, that it doesn't become a repetition. But if you go to the next floor and you have the feeling, oh, it's like the floor before, and then go to the next floor, and so in a certain way, not uh, that the visitor becomes, uh, okay, oh no, not, not, not another floor, but that you're going in and say, oh, wow, here's something different, and here's starting a new narration, here's starting a new, you can always, and this is also something great, because you can always put also different focus in the different floors, and also you can experiment with different ways of showing in the different floors. Mm -hmm. And um, I think I, I learned in, in the last years that to, to appreciate even this maybe difficult structure, mm -hmm. but um, something demanding. And I always have the feeling if the space is difficult, it's in the end for artists and also for me as a creator it's easier. Because mm -hmm. um, then you have to react. You, you can work with the architecture, you can work against the architecture, you can, uh, but uh, it's, uh, you have to position yourself towards the space and it is, I think, always good. I think if, if it's, a, it's a solo show, it's a closely collaboration with an artist and it's based on the idea of of the artist and then it's a process, you think about what's best and try to develop and also try to enable, for example in Bioshock he told me he wants to have 20 centimeter sense in it in, in the exhibition when we showed a uh, mm -hmm. new production by um, Araba Al Matfuna. Um, I said yes, okay how about I do it and it was in the end 125 ton sand. I'm always, if I believe in an idea I always want to uh, enable everything which is possible and um, and I like this idea and I also like difficult ideas and I think it's nice if art is uh, radical in a certain way and um, sometimes also discussion, if, I think if it makes sense I make everything possible. On the other hand if it's a group show and it was this uh, You Killed Me First, uh, this punk film out of the 80s, it's, uh, uh, it was a long approach, how, because I, I, I wasn't in New York in the 80s, unfortunately, I don't know, I was too young in those times, and 
and I also thought, okay, I don't. It shouldn't be too romantic. It ha should be also like a contemporary approach, which I thought is good because I haven't seen it. So it was uh, ideas were coming, and these ideas I, I asked people out of the eighties. Mm -hmm. um, and then it was also an, a vision of how to show it, and I was really happy when the artist and because it was a group show, and then you have to find a principle on your own. And the artists really liked it, and other people who were in the 80s around in New York said that it really hits the atmosphere because I thought it has, you can't make a really clean show out of these punk films, even if they're still transgressive, they're still um, provocative and still shocking. I think they haven't, which I thought the reason to show it, they haven't lost anything, although it's 30 years ago now. Mm -hmm. and. Um, could also show it in a white cube, but I thought it's too early, and I, I was not sure about to to bring it in like to how how you say it in English like to musealize it to make mm -hmm. it like a museum and to really to I mm -hmm. thought it's good if if you are also in the aggressive atmosphere and you are um, um, the idea was that the visitor has to vomit when they go out, and I yes, think um, I, I feel <laughs> yeah, and I think that was it shouldn't be too soft and like okay with the distance we we, we are not touched anymore. Mm -hmm. I think it's thirty years ago, but I think the film is still radical and touching, and I think it was also the idea that it was too much, and you really want to escape in the end, and mm -hmm. and also have to react on it. What's still the topics who which are in these movies are still, or unfortunately still, haven't changed so much to nowadays. Mm -hmm.